Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the Folius Duo live stream Go series. Today we have our guest, Kyle Thompson, who's going to play some classical guitar after our set and a bunch of new music today. Thanks for being here. I see uh, Jennifer, hello, and Robert, hello. Thanks for tuning in. Emily, uh, my student, hello, and Johannes Muller. So great to see you here, uh, all the way from from the Netherlands. <laughs> uh, we've been enjoying Johannes's live stream. Also a great supporter of new guitar works. He has a, a wonderful guitar composition uh, studio that's promoting active composers writing new works and he's playing them. It's really great. Chaz, hello. Hello, Johnny Scotch. Hello, Nate. Hey, mom and dad in Idaho. Hello, John Hayes. Great. So uh, we're gonna start with one of Andrew's pieces. This is Aquatic, and it's from his Dragonfly Suite, and it's all about the life of the dragonfly. So in this one, you can imagine uh, yourself or someone else as a little uh, dragonfly. Dragonflies actually live most of their lives in the water. Not many people know that. They live four or five years in the water before they go out and fly. So here is Aquatic. Thank you. 
All right. Thank you, everybody. Clap, clap, clap. <laughs> it's always mm -hmm. funny on the live stream, you're waiting for a response, and it's silent, so silent here. Um, great. So great to see some more folks on. Hello to Michael Pierce, who's our ninja behind the scenes. So if you have any questions, you can always check out what Michael's doing. He's, he's on. He's taking care of the stream for us. Hello, Marty. Great to see you. And Uncle Ron, hello. Jeremy Verwise, fellow guitarist. Hello. Hello, Melanie. Nice to see you. And Kristen. Hello, Osvaldo Barucoa. We have a, an amazing Argentinian guitarist in the house. If you want to learn Argentine folk, look up Osvaldo Barucoa. Amazing. Thanks for tuning in. Hello, Debbie. And hello, Chris. <laughs> From five blocks away. <laughs> yeah, you could also just come and, and listen on our porch eventually. <laughs> not today. Oh, but not today. It's Today's nasty. a great day for a live stream. <laughs> Hi, Teresa. Um, great. So this is me now. I'm going to play my solo flute piece, Loco Valse, the Crazy Waltz.
Bergeron gets to talk now. All right. Well, awesome. Thanks, everybody, uh, for being here with us along this journey. Uh, thanks, Debbie Crosser, Olivia Vargas, Leslie Newman, Josh. Thank you for being here. Everybody, we're all jamming along here uh, remotely. <laughs> thanks, Ralph and Jeremy. And, yeah, it's a beautiful flute playing. You know, every day you just hear that, you know. Coming out of the practice room and just, uh, you know. Practice room. And this is it. This is our practice room. And it, you know, just uh, inspires me to just keep writing stuff for the flute that's way harder than anyone else can play. You know, <laughs> Carmen's just, she just keeps proving she's got it. So, yeah. Thanks, everybody, for all the support and the, the claps and all that from all over the place. Uh, for those of you in West Michigan, uh, Hope you're all sitting inside with a warm drink because it's, it's nasty out there, man. Holy cow, the, the, the bush in the, by the window here was hitting the window. <laughs> I, I don't know. But um, <clears throat> uh, we're going to uh, continue uh, uh, with uh, the newest piece of mine called Summer Bubble. I wrote this last summer and it kind of uh, like encapsules uh, this crazy life that we've all been living through, uh, trying to figure out what in the world's going on now. And... Um, it has a lot of beauty and some tension all up, all up in there in that bubble that's gonna, it's gonna burst at some point, and maybe we're all on the other side of the bubble or we got a different bubble, I don't know, but here we are. So thanks, thanks everybody for jamming along. Uh, this is summer bubble. Blustery outside. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Deanna and Jonathan. <laughs> Great to see you guys. <laughs> All right.
<laughs> I see Olivia wrote some. I uh, can't see the emojis exactly from here, but I could see Andy kind of headbanging in my favorite part in that piece. <laughs> so that was probably it, kind of the culminating moment. So thanks again, everybody, for listening. Hello, Brendan. Thanks for joining us. And Jonathan Marshall, fellow guitarist and a guitar organizer. So thanks for being here. And Ralph, thank you, Osvaldo, again. And I just want to mention, there's been a link. We have a, uh, Michael's been posting a link about our merch table. So a few weeks ago, Carmen put on her e-commerce wizard hat for a whole day. And I figured out how to give us a virtual merch table since we can't have a real merch table in person. So go check out our merch table. You can actually donate there. You can uh, buy our CDs. We're doing our two for 20 special that we normally do at live shows. You can do that now at our merch table online. Our recipe packs are there as well. That was a good ordeal to figure out how to get those to show up. So yeah, check out our stuff there uh, on our website or you can give through Venmo or PayPal like before. So, all right. So we will hand it over now to Kyle Thompson and uh, he's going to play some uh, piece, original piece that he wrote for this show. And he can tell you a little bit more about it. And some other really interesting guitar stuff. So please welcome Kyle Thompson. Uh, thank you, Andy and Carmen. Uh, thank you for having me on, this, on your series. Uh, very lovely playing. Um, I'm going to play two sets of music for you. Um, the first is a, a suite of four pieces by Marek Pizetsny, titled The American Suite, in four movements. Uh, the, first, um, uh, the first being New Life Time, the second Under the Scottish Sky, and uh, the third, uh, The Truth is Out There, and the finale, Tearing Away. And then the last is my, um, a suite I wrote for this, which I'll talk a little bit more about after Pizetsny. Um, thank you for everybody in the chat. Uh, here goes nothing.
Thank you, everyone. Oh, hello, Ella. Thank you, Ella, for interrupting me. You'll have to pardon the extra chords in there. <laughs> this is what happens when you have a dog. <laughs> Sorry, it's a little excitement. <laughs> So these, this next set of pieces are pieces that I wrote, um, and, I, and I specifically wrote them for this concert when, when Andy called me to, um, to, to ask me to play on this. He said he was looking for something that was, uh, you know, things people don't normally play or things that were arranged by me or written by me, and so I took it as a challenge um, to, to write some pieces, and I kind of had these in, in scraps. Um, so I, I took it upon myself to, um, to uh, put them together in coherent musical, uh, you know, likings. And, uh, sorry, the dog is still. <laughs> and um, so this, I, I titled it Sweet for a Day, Morning, Noon, and Night. And these are three short pieces just kind of depicting um, my moods throughout the day. Morning, um, definitely, you know. Uh, nostalgic but not wanting to get out of bed, the malaise of the middle day, noon, and my most frantic um, is nighttime. So uh, before I play these, I want to thank Andy and Carmen for having me. Um, thank you for everybody watching, everybody in the chat, and to the, my few friends who came and uh, are watching me live in my ho house. Thank you very much. Um, and with that, here it is.
right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone who's watching. Thank you, Andy and Carmen. I will throw it back to uh, Eastern Avenue in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Hello. Here we are. <laughs> we can hear each other? We can hear each other. Oh, All sweet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the technical part is the, the worst part of the whole deal here. I think um, we got it. <laughs> Great to hear you, Kyle. Thanks for sharing that piece. That was such an interesting yeah. guitar work. So, and that first piece. <laughs> yeah, so interesting is a way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, for everyone out there, we've known Kyle ten plus years. Um, fellow colleagues with him, teachers, also players. Kyle's premiered um, some of our most important chamber works. Uh, some have played some of Andrew's solo guitar work. So, we have a long uh, relationship with Kyle. So. Uh, we thought we'd just take a few minutes, ask some questions. It's part of the Go series is uh, for you all to get a behind the scenes of the lives of musicians. So um, yeah, I'll go first. So my question for Kyle, since you wrote a piece about kind of the, the day in your life, the rhythm of your music, musician life. So what gets you going in the morning? What is your, like, what's your power breakfast? How do you, uh, if you eat breakfast, how do you, uh, tell us about that. I do, oh, okay. I do. I do. Um, not every day, because some days I have to be up very early to go teach. Uh, but left to my own devices, I, uh, I'm, I'm an eggs and meat kind of guy. Eggs and a couple, egg and a couple slices of bacon and lots and lots of coffee. Um, and if I'm left to my own devices, I'll eat that breakfast and then go immediately to practicing. <laughs> no toast? Uh, yeah, sometimes toast. Sometimes tortillas if I have chorizo. You know, oh. So. It, uh, you know, it varies, but definitely nice. protein, protein filled breakfast. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, I, I don't have a good segue to my, to my next question, Carmen. So I'm just going to do this. <laughs> That's right. I'm just doing it. Um, <laughs> you know, a, a while ago I was over at your house and you showed me your the guitar composition. I don't know what you would call it, a card with all the fretboard, or the fretboard, all the notes. And I was kind of wondering if you could kind of explain your process for writing for guitar, because I played you know, quite a few of your guitar pieces and um, always found them interesting. They sound great. They're always very technically a little bit difficult. And I'm wondering <laughs> if you could just take us through the process. Oh, yeah. So it took me a while to get to the card that, that <laughs> Kyle's talking about. But Basically, I, when I started writing for guitar, it was a little bit like if you've ever seen that far side where the elephant is at the piano and he's like, what am I doing? I'm a flutist. <laughs> so I started writing for guitar a little bit like, like that, like, oh my God, what am I doing? And um, initially I wrote at the piano and thought, great, I'll write at the piano and then I'll just adapt it for guitar, right? So of course not realizing how bad triads uh, that fit well on the piano, adapt to the guitar very poorly. So that was stage one. <laughs> uh, then stage two was like, um, I better learn how to play the guitar. <laughs> so I actually learned to play guitar, forced Andy to teach me at night, which he hated. <laughs> you can talk about that later. Um, I actually learned like some uh, Leo Brower etudes, legit, some, some Segovia scales. Um, but it, after a while, I was kind of like, oh, I, this is great. Now I know how the guitar works. But obviously, to really get into it, it's going to be so much time. So, But that was step two. I would say I'm at step three now, where I basically use a, a hand-drawn fretboard for myself. And I have it in a sheet protector. And I actually use little stickies, little sticky stickers, to like map out shapes I want to use based on my knowledge of, you know, harmony, was, which is really piano-based, but based on knowing how the guitar works. And um, I also practice out of a book by Miles Okazaki, who's the jazz um, instructor at, at University of Michigan. And he has a background in math and physics, and he does these crazy sort of mappings of all of the possibilities on guitar. He has a great explanation of how the overtone series work. And I actually practice his, um, he has this thing for what he calls rhythmic modes and pitch sets. And um, so I actually practice guitar stuff on flute. And then oh, I have a much better sense of um, how I want to work with the two instruments. And yeah, so that's. Okay. So <laughs> you kind of you, you take some guitar stuff to your flute stuff, but then you, 
Yeah. Okay. That, that's interesting. Um, <laughs> do you do you feel like you have a? I don't mean to ask a follow up question, but I'm going to. Um, do you, do you feel like you have it kind of down to a process that's workable now? Once you kind of have something, you can get it to the to um, the you know, kind of on paper, relatively playable. Yeah. Well, and I would say I have kind of two avenues. One is the folk avenue, especially our Argentine music background, mm -hmm. and studying that music, and that's a little bit easier to adapt because it has a lot more guitar-based things. Um, but if I want to do something really wild, I know how to like curb myself now. <laughs> to where I'm going to pick something that I, I know is going to work somehow on the guitar. Because I used to just pick, like, oh, I want to do this crazy thing. I'll make it work. And, and then yeah, it's probably Andy's job to yeah. check it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, do you have a question you cool. want to ask, Kyle? <laughs> sure. <clears throat> well, I guess going, I want to go on that just a little bit. Um, you know, it's interesting, uh, you know, being a performer, a player, you know, you've been... You know, okay, those of you, I know there's a lot of musicians watching this, but, you know, those of you who don't know this, you know, you got to do this every day for hours. And at some point it's like, well, what's going to keep me going? You know, like I, I played these scales, I did this thing, you know, how, how do I keep going? And, you know, like Carmen was talking about playing guitar exercises on the flute. I've been playing flute exercises on the guitar uh, this last year, and that, that's been uh, really refreshing for me. And so I was wondering, Kyle, like what... What's your what's your routine like uh, on the instrument? Do you do you have a set thing you follow? You, you were talking earlier. You said your ideal world. You you ate you ate your meat and you <laughs> you had your tortillas and you're like yeah I'm gonna practice. I got all day. I don't care. My dog is is gonna watch me or is your dog a part of it? You know like what what <laughs> you got a thing you do or you just like sit down and you just start playing that rock and roll fourth movement and get in the mood or what what do you do? <laughs> Andy, if we could just get all of that on my tombstone, that would be tremendous. I think that sums up like my entire existence. Um, I don't know if I really have anything to add to that. <laughs> um, no, I, I don't. I, I actually I don't have a very rigid process. I tend to my my practicing tends to be very frantic. If if it's the summer and it's the morning, I'll have my breakfast. And then I'll start practicing, usually with technical exercises, and that varies. I don't have a warm-up routine, um, but I'm usually working on some sort of dexterity with left hand and, and, and some sort of scale work. Um, right now, I'm going through, I'm kind of re-going through a, a book called uh, Guitar and Gymnastics by Robin Hill that I've kind of pulled off my shelf and I'm playing a lot of that. But what really keeps me going is lots and lots of coffee. Really, just <laughs> cheap, cheap coffee. And, well, and if I'm practicing at night, I'm a, I'm a nighttime practicer too, um, most of the time. I'll make coffee at like 8 and then I'll just go. Black coffee, sugar, or cream I, I, or I, milk? I, How do you I, do it? I do, I do a little cream. I do a little cream. And I like some sugar too. Yeah, so you I prefer ha half and half or, or cream? Heavy cream? Oh, you're, you're, you're getting, this is getting real personal, Andy. Um, <laughs> oh, you don't want to give away the secrets. A, you guys, okay, you don't, you don't got to go. No, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, Sh I'm a Shibani sweet cream guy. That's, that's oh, what I get. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get you going. That's good. <laughs> All right, I think it's um, Kyle's turn to put yeah, Andy in the hot seat. <laughs> well, I do, I have a guitar question for Andy because you, he, you know, we, People don't know this, but we were messing around on some uh, sore exercises yesterday at the test. I think he was playing sore number six, and I was playing sore number five, and and I was just kind of wondering um, what what role those those types of pieces have in, in your teaching as someone who kind of composes your own music and uh, music in a much different style. I guess overall, how do you balance the old with the new? Well, I, I guess as a teacher, I don't know. At some level, you. You know, like I, I learned all the basic stuff. You know, I, I teach, I, I, you know, I trained being Suzuki guitar teacher in the early 2000s. Um, I have lots of history teaching people from age four, five, six. You know, I've been college guitar instructor at a couple different schools. And I mean, at some level, you got to learn, you know, the basic things, you know. But I think at some point, it's all about like, how do you tap into the, the creative self inside of you? And what what mm. speaks to you, and what what is beautiful, and you know, like I, you know, I also teach music theory, and 
you know, we study the uh, inventions by J.S. Bach, and if you read his foreword, he said, you know, they're like there for keyboard practice, the two hands, blah, 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 blah. But in the end, he's like, really, the ultimate goal is for people to invent or to be creative, that through playing them, then you, mm -hmm. you can invent, whether that invention is like, you know, uh, making your actual own piece, like you played today, or like, you know, you all mm -hmm. know Carver and I do, or maybe that invention is just like the, the, the creative process of learning how to play a piece and making it your own, you know, expression of yourself. Um, but yeah, I mean, for the guitar, you know, like, yeah, I, I, I've taught, I've played the Carcassi Etudes, the Soar Etudes, the Brower Etudes, you know, and, and there's some nice material there. I think, I guess, if you're going to go there, you know, playing J.S. Bach is the, the thing. <laughs> if, you can play, if you can play Bach and connect with that, then, then I think, I, I used to think like it just made everything else easier. Like if you could play a piece by Bach, then other pieces uh -huh. become easier. But then eventually it's some, I don't know. I'm sorry all y'all that had, maybe don't feel this way, my old students. <laughs> like, like, oh man, I just wanted to play rock and roll like Kyle does. And, and <laughs> that's what you got from me. <laughs> no, I teach those pieces too though, Andy. I mean, I teach like all my students, you know, go through all like a, a, a selection of those. So, you know, they, they all do it, you know. It's, um, it's just every teacher kind of balances it differently, I think, so. Right. Yeah. Wow, all right. awesome. Here, yeah. everyone's got the wrap-up. All, right. all right, wrap-up. So thanks again, everyone. You can check out our merch table or you can donate today. Remember, we're splitting all of the donations today with Kyle and the dog. Dog's gonna need. Oh yeah, she is yeah. On she's cue. trained. She's got, she's I think you I mean, planned dude, this whole uh, thing, man. Look at that dog. That's the better tip, man. It's <laughs> the money maker. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I want to invite you all to the next show as well. The Foley's Duo live stream birthday concert. It's my birthday, and I'm giving away some cool stuff on my birthday. So please join us. Um, go back to Kyle, and we can all wave. Yeah, bye. <laughs> Say bye, and thanks again, everybody.